Okay. Okay, today's daf Ezra Hashem is daf Chof Beis in the Sechta Sota. And we're beginning, we're beginning on daf Chof Aleph, Amud Beis, about like 10 lines from the bottom. Hechid Dama Rosh Aram. Okay, so 10 lines from the bottom and daf Chof Aleph and Beis. Hi, Sheldon, we just began. Hi, thank you. Okay, so so basically we're discussing, I think, one of the most f- fascinating Gemaras in all of Shas, okay? I've said that before many times, but this is one of them. It's basically about uh, from Jews who disappoint, who disappoint you. That's basically what the Gemara is talking about. Uh, and that was mentioned in the Mishnah, that the Mishnah uh, mentioned the Rabbi Yeshua, who said a comment, a life comment, that certain people uh, destroy the fabric, erode the fabric of the world. And so the first person he, he decided was a chassid shaita, which we learned briefly yesterday. Uh, we'll just repeat it. A chassid shaita is somebody who destroys the fabric of the world. Because you see this, you don't want to be Jewish. You don't want to be from. What's it considered a foolish piousness? If a woman is, 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 is drowning in the river, Va'amar, and he says, "Love Oirach It's not the. It's not. It's not my way. Listakuli ba to to look at her. Va'atzula and to save her. So he he doesn't get involved in trying to help out because he's too from. So uh, again, that's the story of the good Samaritan, the Havdal, the Havdal. But but uh, um, but that's the problem here. He's over pious and he's a fool. He just lost the opportunity to save somebody. Now then, the Gemara says, "Hey Chidami." One of the other people, one of the other people was a Russia Aram. A Russia Aram is a cunning Russia. What's a cunning Russia? Omar Rabbi Yechen, Rabbi Yechen explained, it's a from guy. He has a way to present himself to the judge before the, the litigant comes, before the person that he has a din Torah with uh, appears to the judge. So he already, in a backhanded way, convinced the judge of, of his side of the story, and the judge is locked in to him, uh, and therefore it's very hard for the judge to judge fairly. Now that's a lot of derisa, but he did it in a backhanded way that the judge himself did not realize that. So again, he's a Russia, and, uh, and he's a cunning Russia. Rabbi Bo, I mean, Rabbi Bo says like this, I'll give you another example. A guy who gives tzedakah could be a, a Russia. How could a guy who gives Sadaka ever be considered to be a Russia? So the answer is listen, a, a person who's eligible for programs, and then you give him a little bit of extra money, so now he's no more eligible for programs. So that's a Russia. And this is the same thing in the in the in the Jewish world as well. A poor person can collect one of the Matnasinium leket. So he gives uh, just a little coin to the poor person. Now, now he get, got over the threshold of 200 zuz. In other words, um, in other words, the person prior to the ani, to prior to the prior to the person giving him the uh, the money, he had less money and he was eligible to take. Uh, now we learned in the Mishnah, if a person has 200 zuz, lo yito. A person should not If he has 200 chassidim, he's just missing one little coin. Hello? Hello, do you hear me? Now I do. Does anybody hear me? Yes, now I do. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. Testing, one, two, three. Yes, yes, yes. Hello? 
Yes. 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 Does anyone hear me? Yes. I hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Hello? We hear you. Okay. Anyway, so that's that's the that is the a Russia uh, who's a cunning Russia. Abaya Oma, Abaya says, "Ze Hamasi eats a limko benechos benechosim kerabshem begamliel." The time we learned to the brisa. A person gives advice to somebody. I'm sorry. We're up to over here. Rab Asi Abba Rab Yochanan. Ze Hamasi eats a limko benechosim muatim. He gives advice to somebody who has a little bit of, of possessions. In other words, a, a father died and he left over, let's say, one apartment building. That's enough to feed uh, his daughters so they could have food on the table. So the Gemara says that the, the, the girls should take the rent income and buy food and the boys and the boys should um, the boys should go collecting for their own food. I mean, that's it. Uh, uh, the, the girls should stay at home and they get the rental income. But the deed is in the boy's name. So a guy gives advice to the boy, sell the property and, uh, and then the girls will have to go collecting also. If the orphans uh, before it was established in Besden reached out and and sold when there was a little bit, uh, when there's little property left, whatever they sold is good. So therefore, uh, by, uh, by, so therefore, he's a Russia. He's a cunning Russia, giving advice, sticking his nose into somebody else's business, and he doesn't even benefit from that. Abaya Amar Abaya says another uh, case. Someone who gives advice to somebody to sell possessions like Rav Shimon Gamliel. The time we learned to the Brisa. Let's say a man says, a guy who has no children says, um, I'm giving you over, let's say, an apartment building. And then when you die, when you die, I want somebody else to get that property. And then when you die, it should belong to somebody else. So what did the first guy do? The first guy sold the property and then ate up all the sales proceeds. Then he died. The second guy, who died, uh, second guy who's supposed to get the property after the first guy died, he could uh, has a lien on the property and, and could pull it out and foreclose on it and get it back because the first guy really had no right to sell it. Rebbe, Rab Shimon Megamliel, Oimer Rab Shimon goes says it's too late. The second guy only gets only if it was left over from the first guy. But if the first guy sold it, the second guy doesn't get anything. So this Russia gave the first guy to the guy who got the property first the advice to sell it, and thereby preventing any benefit from the property going to the second guy when the first guy dies. And because of that, therefore, again, he's a Russia mixing into somebody else's business, only just spitefully stopping the second guy to have any benefit from a potential gift. Rav Yossi Bachama Amrav Rav Sheshis. Rav Yossi Bachama says an example of a Russia is Zeha Machwiya Achreim Bar Chosav. He, he's a cult leader. He, 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 he shows people how pious he is. And really, he's such a, he's a manoval. But he, he has people look at, look at my ways and try to follow me. But basically, he's covering up his immoral behavior by displaying very pious behavior in front of people. Rav Zrika Omar Rav Huna, Atmo is a person that is, is light on himself when when he, he's makel for himself, when it comes to halacha, he go, takes the lenient route. But when people ask him a question, oh, he's very strict. Such a people, such a person is a Russia, he's a Russia uh, and a cunning Russia, because maybe if you hold that like you're supposed to be strict, then for yourself, you're not supposed to be lenient. Ula Ama, Ula says, let me give you an example of a Russia, of a Russia, a cunning Russia. Zeh, we're going to go to the next page. Hold on. So he says, 
at the top of the page of Chafez Amaral. It's somebody who uh, learned, this is very interesting. He learned uh, Chomish and he learned Mishnayish and did not do, learn, uh, serve Tamid Chachamim, which is another way he did not learn Talmud. And therefore, if you, if you just learn the surface of the Torah and that's it, then you're like a conservative rabbi. And, and, and therefore, you're going to paskin wrong because you don't know the nuances of halacha. And and what 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 it seems in the what what the Mishnayis will say is also you're gonna um, what the Mishnayis is gonna say similarly also you're gonna think it's also but really it's mutter and the opposite sometimes the Mishnayis say it's mutter and, and it's really it's really also because we don't pass it this way and therefore if you just know things on the surface and then you start start uh, guiding people that is a ru- cunning Russia because eventually Torah will be lost by your your students Itmar now the Gemara goes on a Gemara. That t- discusses what happens a guy who learns Chumash, learns Mishnayis, but doesn't learn Talmud, like we're learning. Itmar. Kara Vishana Vlashimesh Tamid Chachamim. A person who reads Chumash, learns Mishnayis, and does not, and does not serve Tamid Chachamim. Again, serving Tamid Chachamim means, means somebody who actually goes and studies Talmud. In, in those days, serving Tamid Chachamim. What meant you study Talmud with it with a rabbi explains to you the 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 depth behind of what you learned in the Mishnayis. So if someone did that, Rabbi Laza Oime, he's not learning Talmud, Hareza Amaretz. He's Amaretz. In other words, that not only that, you can't trust him on Kashrus when it comes to Maisris and his whatever he says is tar, you should really consider it Tame. Rab Shmuel Banachmeno Amar Rab Shmuel Banachmeno says, Hareza Bur. He's like a B O O R, which means somebody who doesn't even know would not be successful in business. Again, he's somebody who, who's uh, who's worse than Amaretz. Even in regular secular activities, he's not good at. Rabbiana Aymarezek Kusi, he's worth. He's almost like a Samaritan, like a goy. And not only that, a Kusi, you're not allowed to eat his bread or drink his wine, because since he's 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 like somebody who just reads Chumash and now deciding that's uh, that's how he bases his religion. Uh, and he can figure out what the proper path is. Uh, uh, he's like a, a like an early Christian, basically. Rav Acha Bar Yaakov Hareza Mogoish. He's like a sorcerer, a magician, because who's saying things that they don't understand. They're saying abracadabra. They know what uh, what what is uh, you're supposed to say for this and this ailment. Of course, you don't understand what you're saying. I like the example that Rav Acha Bar Yaakov used for somebody who just learns. And doesn't doesn't study the Talmud, the Amri Inchi, because people said Roten Magoisha, the 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 Magoisha is the sorcerer, just repeats incantations. Vuloyoda Ma Omar, he has no idea what he's saying. So same thing, Tonatan, a person learns Mishnayis, Vuloyoda Ma Omar, and he doesn't know what he is saying. It's it's very important to learn in clearly in depth and understand what you're trying to say, not just to say thing off the skim off the top. And just have a have a, a a surface understanding of what you're saying, and the Gemara has bad statements for people like that, uh, and and then those people who go ahead and just knowing things on the surface become rabbis and start paskining, that's a terrible terrible thing, and that's what the Gemara calls mevale ha'olam, people who destroy basically what it means this they destroy the Jewish religion, and that's uh, the whole you know uh, that that was the whole reform movement. Tanura, uh, we go further in this. Tanura Bonan, Ezehu Amaretz. We mentioned that somebody could be called an Amaretz. That means that if he touches something, it's Tame. If, if he says he took Maestris, we don't believe him. What makes somebody an Amaretz? Kol she'ena kora, Krishma shachas v'arva b'chasel. Rabbi Rameir. Rameir says if he doesn't read the Krishma, in other words, he doesn't attend shul services, you got to assume that he's an Amaretz. But Chachamah Maimer Chachamah says you could attend shul services, but kol, uh, maybe on Shabbos, but kol she'enoi, kol she'enoi maniach tefillin. If he's not putting on tefillin, that means he's reading the Krishma, I'm not putting on tefillin, that's an Amaretz. Ben Azay, Yoyme Ben Azay says, kol she'enoi tzitzis bevigdoi. If he doesn't wear tzitzis in his clothing. In other words, he's wearing a four, uh, four-cornered garment, and he's not putting on tzitzit. Now, again, he's reading the Krishma, and if Krishma is telling him to put tzitzis on, and he's not putting tzitzis on. Rabbi Yonisim ben Yosef Oymar, an Amaretz is kol sheyesh lebonim, he has sons, ve'ena megadlin lil moitorah, he does not sending him to Talmud Torah, he's sending him to public school. 
So you could be religious from today to tomorrow. And, but your, if your own children, which is the most important thing you have, is you send to, to secular institutions and you're not uh, raising them to learn Torah. That means you have to, it's not enough to teach your, your kids about the mitzvahs. You have to teach them to learn Torah on their own. So if you don't do that, you're considered an Amaretz. Rav says even much more. You can have a guy who's really, he's really proficient in the Torah. Afilu He learned all the Chumash. V'shayne, he learned all the Mishnayis. V'loishimish Tamid Chumah, but didn't learn the Talmud. So again, he's a guy who could fool people uh, uh, that he's he really knows how to learn. Zehu Amaretz. That's an Amaretz. Again, you can't trust this Kashrus when it comes to Maestras. Kara V'loishona. If he just learned Chumash and didn't learn Mishnayis, I raised a boor. Then he's a boor again. He does. He's somebody you you wouldn't even go into business with. If a guy doesn't learn, he doesn't he doesn't learn chumash the um, the, the the regular chumash. He doesn't learn mishnayos. All of akasavoyim of Israti is based Israel based Yehuda. That zera adam v'zera vehema. Sometimes a person can start off as a human being, and he can end up as an animal. In other words, you can assume that if a person doesn't have the even the basic, I guess the basic moral character from the from the Bible. Uh, uh, the ten, you know, the main commandments. He is worse than an animal. We can see this is the whole our generation here who you, uh, who, who have no idea what the Bible uh, says. Yerei Hashem as beni v'melech im shoynim al tisarav. The Shlomo Melech gave advice to his son, and he says, "Fear God, my son. Be the king. The im shoynim al tisarav. Don't be around people who are shoynim." What did he mean, Shainim, those who repeat? Omar Rabbi Yitzchak, he told, Shlomo Melech told his son, get away from people, Elu Shushayna Halachas. Those that only know Halachas, again, they know the surface of the Torah, but they never serve Tamid HaChachamim, so they don't understand what they're saying. They just know things on the outside. Um, so the Gemara says, Pshita, isn't that the simple way to read the Pasuk? So the Gemara says, no, Mahu the same, I would have thought, that Shlomo Melech was advising his son, Shonim Bechet, don't be around people who repeat offenders, people who sinned, and then they did it again. You know, in other words, a person who, 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 who did an immoral act and did it again. So, Kidravuna, Dom Ravuna, Kevin Ravuna said a comment that you can program your mind that it's very hard to break. Kevin Sha'over Adam Avera, if a person did an immoral act once, Vishonaba and repeated it again, Hutraloi, it becomes permissible to him. It doesn't mean it's permissible, but he thinks now it's very hard for him to stop himself the third time. Kamash Malam, that's not what Shtoma Melech was advising his son. His, uh, his Avada, he shouldn't be around such people, but even people who prefer, who, who you could think they know a lot in learning because they know a lot of Yedios and they know a lot of Mishnayas and Chumish and Tanakh, etc., etc., but they don't understand the reason of the mitzvahs, they can misguide you. And that was Shlomo Melech's advice to his son. Tana, we learned in Ebraisa. Hatanoim, people who just learn Mishnayis, Mevalei Oilam, are erode the world. So the Gemara says, it means erode the Jewish fabric. Mevalei Oilam, Salkadaitach, they erode the, the world. If, if, if you have a nice person who, who, who knows Tanakh and knows a little Mishnayis, what's this? Why is he destroying the world? Um, Ravina, it's, this is the reason. They, they task in halacha just based on their on-surface learning without understanding the depths behind it. Again, this is the people who, who, um, who, uh, who destroy the, the orthodox religion by creating, uh, by creating uh, they were big Tamid HaChacham and they were on-surface Tamid HaChacham and they created a new religion, the reform, the conservative. People who know how to learn to erode the world, they're, they're keeping the world going. Anybody who who knows halacha, the whole universe is because of him. The reason is, they, 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 um, they from, just from their, their basic learning, they, they pass in halacha without any experience. It's like a, a a person who, who does surgery without uh, with just by reading a book. So that's uh, that's a very important thing. A person has to be mishamish and, uh, and have practical experience. And of course, he has to be learning the Talmud before. 
The Mishnah said, Isha Prusha, a woman who is a parush, which means, a parush means a woman who acts piously. Listen what the Gemara says. Those are the people who destroy the fabric of the world. Don Rabbana, Besulat Sayyolinis. A, a, if you have a young girl, like a, a young girl who davens a lot, that's a terrible, that's not a good thing because she's pretending she's pious and really she isn't. If a, you have a, a widow who's very friendly with her neighbors and what, what she's doing is basically she's covering up for her uh, licentiousness because she's pretending that she's going to her neighbors and doing chesed, et cetera, et cetera. The cotton like color like Hadasha. If you have a small person who didn't finish out his months of service, Hare Elam of Ali Elam. These type of Jewish people erode the fabric of the world, of the Jewishness, of the Jewish religion. Aini, they disappoint people. Aini. So the Gemara says, How could you say that a, a girl who davens a lot is a bad thing? I learned how to fear a sin from a young girl who was never married. And I learned how to uh, get extra reward to do mitzvahs from an almona. I learned how to fear chet from a besula. The Rabbi Yochanan Shamei. Rabbi Yochanan heard lahi besula the nafla aapa. He found out there was a girl who fell down on her face. You know, was praying intently. And she said, Rabbi She was a pretty girl, and she said, Barasa ganedim. Rasa Gehenim. You created Ganadim and you created Gehenim. Rasa Tzadikim, Rasa Rishonim. And you, you created Tzadikim and you created Rishayim. Yiratzim of Nechashli, Kashli Bibene Adam. That uh, nobody should sin, that nobody should stumble because of me, you know, to have uh, bad thoughts, immoral thoughts, because they didn't get me. So she wanted not to be the, the vehicle for somebody else's Avera. So Rabbi Yechon said, when I overheard her pray, I said, wow, that's amazing. Uh, she's a, a great, she's a great davener. And then Rabbi Yechman said, Kibbal socher ma'almona. I learned how to get extra reward from an almona. Dahi almona be Listen to this story. There was this widow who had a shul in her neighborhood. She attended shul. Kol She didn't attend shul once, but every single day she would come to the shul of Rabbi Yochanan and pray there. Amalaz, Rabbi Yechanan said to her, Biti, my, my daughter, isn't there a basic knesses in your neighborhood? Why are you coming to me? Amrali, so she said, Rabbi, the reason why I come to you, don't I get extra reward for taking a longer trip so, to get to a shul? So the Gemara ends the question. The question is, how can you say if you find a basula, uh, a young girl, a virgin girl who's davening a lot, and a girl, and an almona, a widow who, who, who comes to, who goes out a lot and goes to, go, goes on the street a lot, they're, they're, they're Mavali Oilam, eroders of the world. We see you can learn, Rabbi Yechon learn very important things from these two situations a Basula, who davened, and an almona, who kept coming to Shul. Answers the Gemara, Ki Kamara, Kegon Yechon and Bari TV. In other words, like this. What the Gemara is going to answer is a girl who davens a lot, you got to be nervous about such a girl. It's not good for a girl. But once in a while, a girl who davens and says a special prayer, yes, that's a good thing. But a, good, a girl who's an over prayer, she might be covering up for something more uh, sinister. And then the almana, the, the almana is Kegon Yochen and Baritivi. There was this almana who was a witch. She would put a spell on a person. On a, on a woman, and while she was giving birth, uh, the, the person couldn't give birth because the, her, she, she, with her spell and magic, she was able to put a spell. And then she would say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And she would release the spell, and the person gave birth. So everybody thought she was a great prayer, but really she was a witch. And one day they discovered that she was a witch because while she was out praying, pretending to, to visit somebody who's having a tough time giving birth, they broke into her house and they saw all her witchcraft. And so that kind of almona is somebody who are um, mavale oilam. People, people who are pretending that they're praying for somebody when they're the one that caused the problem in the first place. My cotton lunch call it kadosha. What does it mean? A young man who is not going to live out his years and they are destroyers of the Jewish fabric. 
a Talmud Chacham who, who learns a lot, and now he's, he's, he's kicking back at his Rebbe's. The Rebbe's that taught him, he's like making fun of them. So people who see that get told, turned off from, from religious people. Rabbi Abba, and therefore that person's not going to live a long life anyway. So he's going to be not going to fill out his years. A person who's not really supposed to pask in Shilas, and he's paskin in Shilas. And they just they they wound a lot of people with their with their with their halacha. So Amar Abavo, Amar Yehuna, Amar Rav, my diksiv. What's the pasuk that says ki rabim chalolim hipilo? Many people get wounded. Vatsumim kol haregel. So we darshan like this ki rabim chalolim hipilo. Rabim chalolim. There are many people who are wounded from hipilo. That somebody who starts off too early, like a nafel. That how that like an infant born premature. That Talmud Chacham Shlegi Lehira, a Talmud Chacham that's not didn't you know finish past the the uh, past the the training and he's already umayre he's paskening. The opposite is also true. Vatsumim somebody who shuts his mouth call her regal is killing people. That Talmud Chacham that refers to a Talmud Chacham Shlegi Lehira that he he's capable of pasking the ain umayre and is not paskening. So either way, it's bad. If you paskin too early, you're terrible. If you're capable of paskining and you don't paskin, you're killing people because people need you. So the Gemara asks the question, we're up to how much is a person, how old does a person have to be to begin paskining? Uh, till 40 years old. When you're 40 years old, then you could start paskining. So the Gemara asks, Amy, it's not true. But Rabba, Rabba, the, his whole life, he only lived 40 years old. He, he died very young. He was already paskening. So how can you say you should only start paskening when you're 40 years old? Answers the Gemara Bishavim. If, if you're equal to the Godel of your city, then you could paskin. But if you're, if, if, or if there's nobody else around, you could paskin. And that was the case of Rabbah. He, he was superior than anybody else, even though he was very, very young. And that's why he was allowed to paskin early before the age of 40. Now the Gemara says, Umako is Prussian. Another example of a Jewish guy who really turns people off from Frumkite. That means he's, uh, he's self-flagellation. That means he's, 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 doing, he's hitting himself and he's pretending that he's pious. So the Gemara discusses that a little further. Tanurabonim, Shiva Prushnehem. The pe seven people that you think they're pious, but they're not really pious. Parish Shechmi, Parish Nikvi, Parish Kizoi, Parish Midachie, Parish Machoivasi, the Asena, Parish Ma'ava, Parish Meira. So these are seven people, and the Gemara is going to explain the, uh, who are these seven people who seem pious, but that they're, they're not pious. Parish Shechmi, he's, he's a Parish, they call him from Shechem. Remember the story in Shechem and Chumash, the people of Shechem gave themselves a bris mila, but it was they they it was Floy Lushem Shemayim. They just wanted Dina to marry uh, their mayor, Shechem. So there are people who put on, let's say, they do pious things, but they just want uh, people to give them respect. So maybe they'll put on uh, pious garments, not because they mean it, <clears throat> but they want uh, people to look at them and think they're, that they're, they're holier than thou. Zeha Oisa Ma'asa Shechem. These people do Ma'asa Shechem. Parish Nikvi is another type of person. He walks very, very slowly to show that maybe he's in a, uh, he's thinking and learning, let's say. And that's why he's, he's walking with his feet and he stubs his menakafis raglav. He's always stubbing his toe because he's not watching where he's looking because he's pretending he's like, a, he's, he's so engrossed in a sugyo or something like that. And he's, and he's very, he's very humble. Parish Kizoi is another similar type of person, a person who's, 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 is showing how pious is by bleeding. How does he bleed himself? Omar Abnachmar Yisrael Zehamakis Dabmin Lek Solem. He he's he's he he lets blood by bumping into walls because he's he's pretending that he doesn't look at women. Okay, he doesn't look at women, and because of that, he's walking in the street, covering his eyes and banging into walls and and bloodying himself. So these are people are fake pious. You got to be aware of them. Parish Medochia. A guy who looks like a looks like a mortar, a bent over mortar. Amar Abba Bar Shula, the Shemashba Kimedachi. He bends over. He walks very funny in the street, like he's half bent over, like he's looking for a coin, and and, and, and he's telling you why he's doing that is because he's a, he doesn't want to look on the and the 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 priestess in the in the street. 
Again, you got to live. Parish A guy who says, what my obligation and I'm doing it. He's a from guy. He says, what's my obligation and I'm going to do it. So the Gemara says, what's so bad about being such a pious person? You're asking, you're asking what's your obligation? You want to do it. Isn't that a good thing? Ella, the Gemara says, He's saying, what more can I do? In other words, I already accomplished my goals of life and now give me something else to do in life. So that's also somebody who, who's, who's, who's a Balgaivo, who thinks he's already accomplished his obligations in the world. The Gemara says, someone who's pious because he does mitzvah, because he loves to do mitzvah, and somebody who's pious because he's afraid of punishment. So the Gemara says, is that, is that, is that something, is that a, not a, such a good, the Gemara doesn't understand. If someone's pious because he's afraid of punishment, so what's wrong with that? Don't uh, let, don't count into that list somebody who's parish, who's a tzadi because he loves mitzvahs or he's a tzadi because he's afraid to get punished because that's the way re reality is that we're not 100% doing things l'shem shemayim. And really you have to start always shloy l'shem shemayim. The person should do Torah mitzvahs, even for not the 100% the right intention. By doing it without the right intentions, you're just doing it to understand it. You'll come to, to the right intentions. You'll do it with the same Shemayim. Also, you when you learn and you learn with the year of Shemayim, you actually find Shema, your name in the learning. You find the Muna. But so again, we, we just discussed this whole daf about, about people. So the Gemara concludes this whole page about pious people who really turn you off from the religion. So Amar of Nachman by Yitzhak, the Metamre Bitamre, people who hide from you will always hide from you. Udu Megalia Megalia, people who we know about will know about. But Beidina Rabbah, when they get up to the, 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 the great justice upstairs, Lipare Mahani de Chafi Gunde. They'll pay back from those that are putting on, uh, like, you know, a, a, a sweet, look, nice looking uh, talus to pretend they're pious, and really they're not pious. In other words, when you get up there, you know, that you can't hide anything. So you shouldn't think so much about them. Again, you got to separate Jews from Judaism. And when the Gemara finally says, Yane Malka said to his wife, he was a king that he was afraid of, of, the, of the Frum people. He told his wife after, before he passes that you're going to be the queen. Altis yorim in aprushim. Don't be afraid of the real pious people because they'll never, you know, harm you. Even though I wasn't such a great king to them. Don't be afraid of the people who are not pious at all. But the real people to be afraid of elamin hatzvuim, people who color themselves. Shadaimin leprushim. They they look like prushim. That means they wear the whole garb, the whole nine yards. They do immoral acts like Zimri did, you know, sleeping with a guy. And they want a reward from heaven like Pinchas. Those people can fool you into thinking they're pious. And they, before you know it, they can really um, uh, uh, take away your kingship. That was his advice to his wife, who was going to take over the kingship. Okay, we just finished this. Thank you, Ashikoya. Have a good night.